Hey everyone, my name is Andrew, and today I'll be showing you how to integrate webhooks into your online checkout integration. When it comes to financial services, webhooks are essential due to the asynchronous information flow of banks, payment methods, and other financial systems. Adyen actually provides a webhook to communicate this crucial information to our customers as soon as it's available. This way, you can get notifications on things like payment status updates and newly available reports. So as you can see on this page, we're on our documentation to integrate notification webhooks, but instead of reading through this documentation, we'll actually build this portion of the integration ourselves so you can kind of see what things look like. First, what you'll need is current checkout integration. And the quickest way to see things up and running is to actually clone one of our example integrations that we have on GitHub. So on this next tab over here, if we scroll down a little bit, You'll see the step-by-step -step instructions you'll need to take. If you haven't done so already, definitely make sure you follow these instructions step-by-step, -step, especially this portion over here, where you generate your .env file with your API key, client key, merchant account, and HMAC key. Now, just to be clear, the HMAC key isn't listed here in this template, but we'll go ahead and make sure that when we generate it, we add it to our .env file later on. All right, let's get started. So at this point, I've cloned the project, updated the env file with my credentials, which of course I can't show on the screen, but it's all listed under here in this file. Our goal here now is to create an endpoint on the server, as we mentioned, which will include logic for acknowledging the notification sent by Adyen, verifying its signature, storing the notification, and also applying our business logic. The first thing you want to do here is make sure that the HMAC validator is imported from the Adyen API library. Next, we'll create a post route to our notifications endpoint. I'll first close the file tree to give myself some more space. And now I'm going to scroll down. And here we'll just say post. Remove some of this boilerplate. And here we can just call this notifications. And within it, we'll just do a simple try catch. What we'll first do is instantiate a new instance of the HMAC validator. This is important because as we iterate through the list of notification request items, we're also going to want to verify as HMAC signatures or hash based message and authentication code signatures. This helps protect the application server from unauthorized notifications, for example, any data that may have been modified during transmission. Next, we'll grab the array of notification request item objects from the request body. And just for the purpose of this demo, I'm actually going to also console log everything onto the screen, just so that you can see what everything looks like. Now, in a real-world application, what you'll also want to do at this point is to store the notification in a database. But just for the simplicity of this demo, we won't necessarily do it here, but I'll leave a comment here as a reminder. The next step now is to iterate over our notification request items array and then process each notification based on the event code. It'll look something like this. Note that in the conditional, we use our HMAC validator to validate each notification or request item, passing in the item itself, as well as our HMAC key. Again, don't worry about the HMAC key too much just yet. We'll go ahead and generate it later in the customer area, but for now, we'll just continue writing the code as if we already have it. It's basically just a secret key that enables HMAC signed notifications, and it's something that we'll just set and forget shortly. Next, we'll pull the event code from the notification request item. You can check out more about the event code right here in our documentation. As you can see, there are different types of events, such as authorizations, cancellations, cancel or refund, capture, those kind of scenarios. Let's go back to VS Code. And at this point, what you'll want to do is just run your business logic. This part will, of course, vary from application to application. But as a quick example, if you wanted to say, handle the outcome for a payment request, 
we can run some business logic based on the authorized event code. It'll look something like this. Now, based on documentation, we know that the value of success lets us know what happened to the payment request. So back to VS Code, we can write something like this. And whatever business logic we want to run here, we'll just run it. And for the simplicity of this demo, if we run to any other cases, we'll just say it's a non-valid notification request. Awesome. Now, when notifications come in, you'll also want to make sure you acknowledge notifications with an accepted response. This helps ensure that our application server continues to properly accept notifications. We can do that right below. Great. And the last thing we'll do here is that if we run into any errors, we'll just do a console at error. At this point, we're pretty much done configuring our server. So let me go ahead and run the application. So we can see that the application is running on port 8080. The issue here, however, is that our application is currently being served on localhost. To actually set up the webhook correctly, we'll need a public URL to this application. This is actually where we can leverage a tool like ngrok, which helps us tunnel, or otherwise forward, to our local application from a publicly accessible URL. What you'll need to do now is to follow the instructions on the ngrok website to install and connect your account, and then run ngrok from the command line on port 8080. Now, since I've actually done that prior to this video, I'll just go back to VS Code and run ngrok from the command line. I'll open up another terminal, go to where I installed ngrok, and then run the command. So if everything's running correctly, you should see something like this outputted to your terminal. What's important here is to look at this forwarding URL below, and I'll expand our terminal a little bit more so you can see it. But it's this publicly accessible URL you want to use to access the application currently running on your local host. The next step is to provide your server details as well as customize the information you want to receive in notifications. First, we'll go into customer area and add our new notification. At the very top, I'll check out our account, go down server communication, and under standard notification, I'm going to go ahead and click add. Now under transport over here at the very top, We'll supply a few pieces of information. First, we'll supply our server's public URL. Again, you'll want to use the forwarding URL from ngrok. And we'll also make sure we hit the new notifications route that we just created. Since we're in a test environment, we'll use no SSL. We'll make sure it's active. And we'll also make sure that the method is JSON. Now let's scroll down a little bit, hit additional settings, and here you can select all the information that you want to receive in notifications. For example, if you wanted to add the require result, this allows you to receive standardized mapping of the require results for AVS and CVC checks. I highly recommend checking out additional settings in our documentation. All the settings, descriptions, and fields are listed right here on this page. Now, one of the final steps here is to generate your new HMAC key. Again, this is what allows you to receive HMAC signed notifications, which will help you verify the integrity of notifications using these HMAC signatures. After generating the HMAC key, which of course I can't show you on this page, you're gonna to wanna to assign that value to an environment variable. In this case, we call it HMAC key as referenced on our .env file. Again, I can't show the generation of my key here, nor can I show what it looks like in our .env file over here. But just make sure you add the value of that key as an environment variable. So I'm back in the customer area, and let me just save the configuration that we just created. So now let's go back to it, 
hit edit and test. Scroll back down to the very bottom. And now we'll test this configuration that we just created. By testing it, this is a good way to make sure that we can receive notifications in our application. If everything was set up correctly, you should see something like this at the very top of the page. Likewise, if you scroll down a little bit, you can also expand each of these to show the contents of each test. And if we go back to VS Code, we can see all the notification request items that we just console logged. Feel free to further configure your server communication in custom area, and also continue applying any business logic in your server code as you see fit. I hope you found this demo a fruitful exchange, and until next time, take care everyone.